our Bahrain Grand Prix F1 driver ratings. We are here with a brand new series. And we are dropping new series like it is... What would you say, Tommy, here? Like, what would we say? Like, it's dropping, dropping like hotcakes. Like Hulk, Nico Hulkenberg down the order in that Grand Whoa, Prix. Whoa, come on. The slander's happened and it's only been 10 seconds into the podcast. But yes, welcome to F1 to 10, where we'll be grading every single driver from, you guessed it, 1 to 10 after the race in this brand new series. So let's start with Tom Bellingham's favourite driver on the grid, shall we? Logan Sargent. He started in 16th place, finished in 12th. Now we're going to give a rating each and we'll then basically just have an average of the two and that will be our overall collective P1 with Matt and Tommy grade for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Does that sound good, Tommy? Sounds good to me. Looking forward to rating this driver that I definitely did not think was going to do badly and has proved me wrong straight away. So Logie Bear, Logan Sargent, Logie Sarge, whatever you want to call him, I am going to give him an 8 out of 10. I feel as though it was a really strong debut performance. It was very easy to jump on the train of him becoming the next Nicholas Latifi. Realistically, he was really good. Like genuinely, when you think about how much Alex Albon tends to always get the most out of that Williams, has some brilliant drives, and he scored a point as well, which we'll get on to. But for Loki Sarge, I'm actually very impressed by his first performance. You know, he's never driven in a Formula One race before. Uh, so yeah, eight out of 10 for me. What have you gone for? Yeah, it's got to be an eight, eight out of 10. Um, can't go nine or 10 because the Williams is as good as they think. Uh, and we've seen so far, we've got to save those for some points finishes, which now looks very much like it could happen. Only an idiot would have thought that Williams wouldn't, you know, not get any points and all that. P12 is so much higher than I could have possibly thought thought he'd be. And it wasn't even that much of a race of attrition, was it? How many actually retired from the race? Two, three? Three. I need to get the result. Yeah. Yeah. He's in that midfield mix more and his qualifying as well was really good. Yeah. Eight, eight out of 10 for Logie Sarge. We now move to his teammate, Alexander Albon. Started 15th, finished 10th. Scoring points. First race of the season in the Williams, I think he did a, a really great job. He was right in the mix for most of the race, and I don't think I can really give him anything other than a 9 out of 10 uh, for scoring a point in the Williams in the first race of the season. Alex picking up where he left off from last year. It seems as though the Williams has, well, from the one race we've uh, analysed, seems like they have a car that maybe they aren't just going to be rolling the dice or, you know, it's just a lottery as to whether or not the car's going to have a good concept it seems as though they have really got a nice baseline package to work from so Alex yeah very solid nine out of ten for me yeah nine out of ten I think is a fair fair grade just because again the Williams could potentially be even higher maybe save a save a 10 grade for that maybe a p8 or a p9 or even higher you never know if Williams are indeed in the midfield mix um it was a great performance from Albon unlucky in qualifying We'll stick with a nine. I think, yeah, one we, point. We need is... some room, room for improvement, right? Nick De Vries started 19th, finished 14th. I was a little bit underwhelmed by Nick De Vries's performance this weekend. He doesn't want to be seen as a rookie, so I'm not going to call him that. He's had a race already under his belt. It's his second race in Formula One, but you know, qualifying really let him down. And then finished 14th, finished a lap down. Sonoda wasn't a lap down, was the actual last car not to get lapped by Max Verstappen and Nick De Vries getting beaten by the likes of Logan Sargent, I don't think so a particularly or worthy of a particularly good grade for me. So I'm going to go with a straight down the middle, five out of 10 for Nick De Vries. Okay. Yeah. Nick, Nick De Vries actually had a, a, he kind of got screwed a little bit by the, the virtual safety car at the end of the race. Uh, but I mean, he still was behind uh, Sargent at this point. So it's not like he would have got, got points or anything he just they took a gamble and it didn't work I will go for a four for Nick DeVries just because I kind of felt like he'd be a lot more on pace with Sonoda particularly qualifying he was way off big surprise to see him essentially uh, last if you don't count uh, Gasly who had his lap time deleted and then dropped to the back he really didn't look on Sonoda's level which which surprised me a lot 
so I'm going to give him a four. I, I guess taking into account slightly with his lack of experience, that's why I was a bit more lenient uh, with the, the five out of ten. We now move to his teammate, Yuki Sonoda. Started 14th, finished 11th. I think Sonoda, considering that Alpha Tauri doesn't look that great, did a pretty good job this weekend. Of course, out-qualifying his teammate, just missing out on the points by... 1.1 seconds from Alex Albon ahead. I don't think it really set the world alight, Sonoda's performance, but at the same time, he has to get a higher grade than De Vries, in my opinion, so I'm going to give him a six. Yeah, he was unlucky not to maybe get into Q3, but he ran out of soft tyres because he put in a really good performance, didn't he, in Q1? Was he up in eighth or something like that? Um, where Nick De Vries don't, was... Don't act like you don't know this, you <laughs> Yuki fanboy. Was he up in eighth with, uh, you know... I think he was up in eighth, way ahead of his teammate. <laughs> um, yeah, but then then couldn't do the do the lap. Uh, and he was unlucky not to get a point, but he just couldn't pass Alex Albon. It looks like that Williams, again, is just absolute legend on the old straight line speed. And Sonoda, I'm going to go for a seven. Wow, okay. Because I think if you look at how bad De Vries did and how well Sonoda did compared to him, I think he, I think he's unlucky. Not, no, seven for not points. But the mm. Alpha Tauri does look terrible. This mm. is quite difficult to grade at the moment because we don't know how good I cars are really, until we yeah. kind of see like four or five races. Um, but the Sonoda fanboy in me is just going to give him a seven and hey. screw off. Okay, cool. So uh, six and a half uh, average for, for Sonoda then. Uh, we now go to... Nico Hulkenberg started 10th, finished 15th, and got a penalty for track limits and yeeted his front wing off with uh, K-Mag-esque driving at the start of the race. This is going to have to be, I'm so sorry, Nico, but this is not what Haas signed up for. It was slightly unlucky, but it's still not what they need. If Hulkenberg is qualifying in the top 10, getting into Q3, he has to score some points. Uh, he didn't do that. So for me, it's a 2 out of 10. Ouch. Yeah, I feel like Hulkenberg here has basically done the opposite to Logie Sarge and how I underrated him and he did well. And now with Hulkenberg, my whole narrative of, oh, biggest surprise, and he's he's the safe pair of hands that will bag you big points. And then he uh, becomes K-Mag and takes his front wing off at turn one and has track limit penalties. Not great for Hulkenberg. Unexpected for a, for a driver of him because he was looking great in qualifying. And then didn't actually do uh, a lap, I don't believe, it, in in the Q3. I'll go for a three just because his qualifying was was a bit better. But shocking from Hulk, really, when Hass need those points because they looked decent. They certainly did. Uh, I think Nico, yeah. Uh, as we now turn our attention to Kevin Magnussen, he started 17th, uh, finished 13th. Just an underwhelming race, really, again. Like Magnussen, you'd expect maybe with there's some kind of pace there in that Hass. Uh, for him to to unlock it, but perhaps that Q1 exit really just gave him a bit too much work to do uh, in the race. So for me, he didn't get a, a meatball flag, so that is an extra point right there. It's going to be a 4 out of 10 for me for K-Mag. I'm going to go for 4 as well. It's just an underwhelming performance, especially the heights of last year. It just didn't look quick, which is uh, a surprise when... Hulkenberg did look quick in qualifying and then he had the messy race. But you look at where he finished 13th, you know, behind Sargent, behind Zhou Guan Yu, his teammate. So basically, he only beat the cars that either pitted near the end for fastest lap or had an absolute mare. So not, not good from K-Mag. We now go to a pacey set of uh, drivers in the Aston Martin crew, Lance Stroll. He started eighth and finished the race in sixth. This grade could have been very different. I still back the fact that I don't think he was ready to race this weekend, just because he had some decent pace and also the fact that he finished in sixth, I don't think, in wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. I mean, we saw when he nearly crashed into Alonso and his steering wheel kind of like flung about that he actually lost grip with his hurting wrist. And that kind of stuff shows that he just wasn't ready for wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat. That being said, though, he did a fantastic job when he wasn't going wheel-to-wheel -wheel with anyone and his pace was really good. And finishing sixth ahead of one of the Mercedes in the current condition that he's in and also not having any F1 testing, it was clearly the right decision overall. Either or, Stroll drove well. It's going to be an 8 out of 10. This is, the I think, yeah, the, the grade. This could have been a 10 out of 10 or a 0 if he'd hit, hit the brakes ever so slightly later. 
the fine margins of F1. I'm going to go for a nine just because I think his what he did with his injuries I think was really impressive I don't think he would get that grade normally for where he finished because obviously he's behind Alonso that guy's in a lot of pain how on earth has he managed to get p6 there yeah six seconds off being p4 when you can't even put your hands on your hips good drive from Stroll. Uh, Fernando Alonso started fifth finished third I have a feeling I know what number's coming out of Tom Bellingham's mouth Uh, (laughs) but I'm gonna give it a nine you know Alonso didn't have the best of starts obviously part of that was due to his teammate giving uh giving him a nice little nudge on the other side of course Alonso's pace was was really really good I think as well you know the fact that he pulled a move like that on Hamilton uh can't be ignored I don't know I feel like the start of the race maybe just takes away from the potential of a 10 because if he'd got through the field quicker who knows he could have been fighting Leclerc a lot earlier. Obviously, we're taking into account he's got a podium, but that's because Leclerc DNF'd. If it was a fourth, I don't think I'd be able to give him a 10 either. And it's a very close to a 10, but I don't think I can give it nine. I agree with you to a point, but my brain cannot give him anything other than a 10. Or my heart, I guess. This makes no sense because realistically, I should be saving that 10, like we mentioned with Albon earlier, that there's more room here for, for him to improve because that Aston does look genuinely good. So... It's not like he's a midfielder anymore where podium 10, but just for what he did in his racecraft and actually seeing him again being at the front and racing people at the front and showing that he still has it at 41 years old to pull off that move on Hamilton is just absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, uh, another fanboy rating from me, it's a 10. (laughs) (laughs) Valtteri Bottas is our next driver. Started 12th, finished 8th. I'm actually going to give him, I was going to give him that grade, but no, delete it. I'm giving him a 9 out of 10. I feel like he had a fantastic race. His undercut at the start got him right in the mix of the likes of Russell and I think it was Stroll as well. Bottas just came out of nowhere. Finishing 8th, I think Bottas just had a a brilliant race in an Alfa Romeo that I am not convinced is actually very good. So yeah, Bottas outperforming the car, even looking like he a little bit racy. I was like, what Valtteri, what are you you saying, big boy? Um, So yeah, good stuff. Amazing stuff. Looking very good. Another driver that's proving that I'm washed and don't know wheel. Yeah, it's a very good performance, but I'll give it a eight because I think he could potentially even finish higher, but the Alfa Romeo doesn't look amazing, but it was a great performance. But if he carries on like that, I could see Bottas being in the mix for like top of the midfield. Realistically, he should not have been anywhere near racing those Mercedes and Aston Martin. So how on earth he was ahead of them at one point during the race. Fair play to him. And I'm now com- trying to almost convince myself that it should be a nine. Yeah, nine. He had a great, he had a <laughs> great start to the race. He really yeah. thrust himself into, into contention right at the start. So uh no, so now, now actually, I'm going to go for nine. Now, now I'm talk, okay. talking about how the wow. fact that he was somehow racing the Astons and Mercs at one point uh, is very impressive. Well done, Bottas. Nine out of ten from both of us. We now go to Zhou Guan Yu. Started 13th, finished 16th, went for fastest lap, got it. Apart from that, do you have much more to say about his race? Was there anything that went particularly wrong or was it just, it just didn't it, go to plan? It's a weird one. I feel like it... This happened a lot last year. You just kind of blink and he's 16th and you don't really understand why. He looked like he was on the pace in qualifying with with Bottas. Absolutely no problem. But for some reason, his race pace is not there. All right, I'm going to go with a 4 out, four out of 10 for me. I'm going to go for a 4 out of 10 as well. 4 out of 10 then. Uh, we now go to Oscar Piastri. Started 18th. Didn't finish. Probably the worst start to a Formula 1 career that you can possibly... Wish for, uh, if you're Oscar Piastri. Absolutely nowhere in qualifying, which was a shame for him. Had every problem under the sun with his car, then it was it was done. Uh, the wheel came off and they tried to change that and they had a loading screen on it and you're wondering, is Oscar just going to go out there just to try and get some sort of mileage in the car? Nope. Um, so it's very hard to judge this one, but I still think he wasn't anywhere near as good as I was maybe hoping him that he would be. Uh, in comparison to to Lando. So I am going to give him a two. Oof. I think I'll go for a three just because I think there was one point where I saw him make one overtake before his car (laughs) went kaput. So it would have been nice to see what he could have done. Yeah, what, what a stinker of a debut. Okay, we now move to Lando Norris. Started 11th, finished 17th because his car... 
was just breaking. He had to come in. He had six stops. I think he was still doing a pretty good job with his car, considering where that McLaren is. It's that probably the hardest driver to judge for a rating, just purely because every time he was making any kind of progress, he was then back in the pits. I'm, I'll, I'll give him a six out of ten, um, just purely because it's very difficult to grade, but I feel like he was getting the most of that McLaren when he was allowed to get the most out of that McLaren, which wasn't very often. I think a six out of ten is a fair a fair grade just because it wasn't his fault uh, what went wrong. You can only really judge him on qualifying. You could argue that that McLaren shouldn't have really been 11th when they looked like one of the slowest cars in the whole field, which is mad to say. So, yeah, 6 out of 10. Pierre Gasly started 20th, finished 9th. Mm. And he also gets a 9 out of 10 from me. You know, to start at the back of the grid in an Alpine that isn't necessarily the kind of level that they were last year. It seems like they're slightly off that uh, when we're comparing them to, to the rest of the midfield cars. To gain 11 positions... Uh, is, is quite quite phenomenal and, and could have easily finished eighth as well, uh, just behind Bottas. So nine out of ten. This is probably going to be the only grade that we disagree on by a little bit more of a margin. I'm going to go for a seven out of ten just because I am not one of these people that gets particularly hyped by someone having an absolute stinker in qualifying and then finishing where they probably should be anyway. Um, wow! Yeah. That's savage! <laughs> I mean, he was the worst driver in qualifying by quite a long way. And then if you look where he actually finished, he finished, he beat a Williams in an Alpine. So, well done. <laughs> we now move to Pierre Gassi's teammate, Esteban Ocon. Started ninth, <laughs> didn't finish. This is the easiest one I've ever given in my entire life. What an absolute stinker of a race. Parked incorrectly in his grid box, got a penalty for that, came in to, the, uh, to serve his penalty, didn't serve it properly, and then sped in the pit lane whilst he was trying to do that. He has equaled the most amount of penalties in a race ever, and it just just didn't go well for him, did it really? Like The fact is, they are, that's his mistake about the grid box, that's his mistake for speeding in the pit lane, maybe not his mistake on not serving the, uh, the time penalty properly, that's probably more on the team. It's still a one, I'm so sorry. So this may surprise you, but because he beat Gaz in qualifying, I've gone for an eight. No, I haven't really. Uh, it's a one out Panic, of ten. Then. <laughs> um, I thought is one too harsh, but then realistically, is any driver ever going to have a race that bad? You kind of have to disregard. I don't think there will ever be a race this year where someone has it this bad, really, because like you say, it's two mistakes. He's set, uh, he's equal to Pastor Maldonado record, which is never a good thing unless it's getting a random one-off win. So yeah, Ocon, it's got to be a one out of 10. Shocking, cursed by Matt Gallagher from the predictions video. Yeah, sorry about that, Esty Bestie. I really do feel bad for predicting that he'd have a stinker and have absolutely no reason to believe that other than vibes. That's all I went off of. Um, but yes, one out of 10 for Ocon. We now go to Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton started seventh, finished fifth. Hamilton finished 51 seconds off of Max Verstappen. P5, for me, it's a seven out of 10. I think that, you know, he beat his teammate George Russell. Not not the best qualifying from Hamilton ever, but he, he beat Russell in the race. He was there or thereabouts with Carlos Sainz, and I feel like he was doing about as much as he could do. They're, they're just lacking. They're just lacking in that in that department. I, I can't, in my brain, give him any more than a 7 out of 10 because he's in a Mercedes. But realistically, when you actually measure it, that might be just be where the Mercedes can get and no more. So... For me, it's a seven. Another reason I couldn't give him an eight, I'd go for seven as well, is that I think he could have got past Sainz if he'd been a bit braver. Uh, he looked at one point like he was all over the back of him, but just needed to maybe be a bit more daring. But we've said this so many times with, with Hamilton that particularly in his later years of his career, that's not how he drives. And that has in the past what's won him championships and got him great points finished because he kind of balances risk versus reward. George Russell. Started sixth, finished seventh. So ended up getting beaten by Lance Stroll by 1.3 seconds. He only finished five seconds off Hamilton. So realistically, it's not it's not far off his teammate. So that's why I'm going to give him a six out of 10, just purely because the pace differential between the two was not far. Stroll slotted in between them. But yeah, Russell didn't have much worse of a race uh, than what Hamilton had and just finished five seconds back. So that's a, a point loss. I don't think I can go any lower than, than six. Yeah, six is a fair fair grade. Just a little bit worse than Hamilton. 
not really much more to say about about his race other than yeah had a decent battle with with stroll but i think uh, i think six out of ten is is a fair grade uh, carlos signs started fourth finished fourth i was not very whelmed by carlos signs's performance very underwhelmed in fact he wasn't really anywhere near leclerc in race pace fell away very quickly from where charles was and if anything was coming under threat from hamilton and i just I just feel as though Sainz, for whatever reason, just doesn't enjoy Bahrain, doesn't enjoy the, the, the fact that he has to really manage the tyres. He finished fourth, started fourth. It's going to have to be a six, I think. Very nearly a five. I just wasn't particularly impressed by, by, by his lack of, of speed uh, compared to his teammate. I think a lot of people will see that finishing P4, qualifying P4 sounds quite harsh to give him a six, but... This is the thing. If you look at Russell and you have to compare what machinery he's got, we've given Russell a six for kind of being off his teammate. And I'd argue that science is even further behind his teammate than than Russell was. Um, but I think a six is a fair grade. I was really disappointed by science, actually, because the end of last year, maybe it's just a Bahrain thing, but end of last year, it looked like he was finally being a little bit closer to Leclerc. And then this gave me deja vu from early in last season where you, where you were thinking, how is Leclerc battling Perez for P2? And Sainz is way back and uh, falling into the traps of the, the Mercedes and the Aston Martins, which shouldn't have been, been happening. Uh, so, yeah, I think a, a six for Sainz. And I really hope this is just a, just a one-off because I thought he would get to grips with the, the Ferrari by now. Charles Leclerc started third, didn't finish. <sighs> I was hoping I wouldn't have to do one of these <laughs> in the first race of the season. He was actually having a very good race considering where that Ferrari is, quite far off Red Bull. I mean, Leclerc couldn't even keep Perez behind uh, after getting a great start. I think for me it's going to have to be an eight. Um, I'm maybe thinking nine but then i might think that, that may well just be passion talking rather than anything else i think it was a solid race from charles leclerc up until the point of his car blowing up he couldn't do any more than third place he deserved that podium he was robbed um but fernando alonso is a, a small consolation uh for charles leclerc retiring and i mean a very small consolation god i wish he'd finished the race but here we are dnf but an eight out of ten i'll I'll be the fanboy then and give him a nine out of ten. Thank you, I really appreciate that. <laughs> because yeah, I think I think Leclerc drove very well. If he'd have finished that race, it's it's difficult because Alonso would have closed in definitely, and uh, Leclerc. We all know that the Ferrari struggle on their tires, but how Leclerc was actually racing Sergio Perez with the the deficit that it seems that Red Bull and Ferrari have. Yeah, I think a 9 out of 10 for, for Leclerc. Sergio Perez started second, finished second. It was just chill for him. He obviously lost the position to Charles at the start, but realistically, I think he and Red Bull knew that all they had to do was bide their time with the strategy. Yeah, it was a solid enough drive from Perez. I don't think Verstappen or Perez were really pushing that hard, to be honest with you, for most of that race. Uh, so for me, 8 out of 10 uh, for Checo. I think he did a, a solid job, finished second. He started second as well. I don't think there was much more you could really ask of um, the, the Red Bull number two. He's a difficult one to to grade. And I think he will, as long as Red Bull are quick, he'll always divide people where he should should be. Because a lot of people will, will probably go, oh, how can, you know, he should get a nine out of 10 for finishing second. And then there'll be some people that think he should probably get like a seven because he's 11 seconds off his teammate. He isn't that car and he's doing everything that Red Bull need him to do. So... Yeah, 8 out of 10. And finally, Max Verstappen. Started first, finished first, 10 out of 10. Moving on. <laughs> I hardly, hardly even saw him in the race, did we? It was just crew city for, for Max Verstappen. I can't really comment on much more about that because we never saw him. Um, but that usually means he's dominating. It, there's nothing else than the 10 out of 10. Yeah, might, we might have to just cut that audio and just place it in future podcasts. I For feel the next like 22 could, races as well. There could be yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, these cool, cool, going cool. max first in quality first in race and a 10 out of 10. What more could he have done? I just I just think that 
yeah, if it carries on, I do hope they do lose a bit of performance just so we can have a bit closer racing because that is what the this whole budget cap is meant to do. I want to see closer battles and yeah, of course I want Max Verstappen to be champion or Alonso at the end of it, but I don't I don't want him to 22 and 0 that won't be good for for anyone. That is the end of our F1 to 10 driver ratings. What are your final thoughts? My final thoughts are hope you enjoyed this new format and let us know what you think to it. If you think we can improve it, any ideas and stuff are always welcome because uh, yeah, we're, we're enjoying kind of having this, this creative freedom and trying new different things and um, we hope you're enjoying it. Thank you everybody so much for watching or listening for being in your ears or eyes or wherever you are. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed this F1 to 10 uh, series. We'll be back for more loads, more content very soon. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.